everybody. No, we're not trolling right now, but look at this. This is I'm going to set up the uh, rod holders or the rocket launches. I'm just going to put them through here like this. And I'm going to make them about 10 inches long. Roughly down to here. They'll end, but they'll be welded permanently in here. And I'm trying to get them up and out as much as I can without interfering. If somebody wants to sit here while well, their rod's in here, I hope they can. I don't know if they can, but we'll see. And the other one is going to go, well, for each hole. This hole's going to have two. It's going to have one going that way, and it's going to have one in here going towards the front. Because if you're bait fishing or something like that, you may want to just hook your rod in there and wait. Uh, but as long as it doesn't interfere with the tarpaulin, see right there, that is in no way because the tarpaulin goes from that corner over to that corner there and that's sticking way down past there. So we've got plenty of room to uh, swing our rod, set the hook, do all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, I just got this. This is two inch uh, 304 grade stainless. But uh, that's what we're going to be doing, cutting these and putting these in this is actually going to go down a little bit more it's going to touch here so that's going to angle the rod up more but still that's plenty of room it's not going to interfere it would have to hit that before it interfered with the tarpaulin cover so anyway the other thing we're doing here we got the uh, clutch there's a typical clutch and it slides on here like this and then we put this one on here and we're welding fingers onto this one we're welding like fingers that stick out all the way around and those fingers go into the teeth on the bicycle chain or whatever go-kart chain gears so the fingers will go all in here it's going to every one of these is going to have a stainless steel finger that slides in and this they'll be welded there so they'll stick out here they'll be sticking out this away like this and that'll just slide onto here and slide off so it's not mechanically attached at all other than just the slide on thing we're doing that this evening at seven and hopefully we got the formula to make that work hey y'all look what we got i'm actually already cut rod holders to length i got a two meter piece of uh two inch by 1.2 inch thickness that's how thick the walls are the edges and i cut them down into 10 inch lengths just now and uh now what i'm doing is uh, and I ground the outside edge here, it's like a little tiny 45 degree angle on the outside edge. But of course, you can see on the inside, it's still got that. So I'm taking my little tiny Dremel here, this little guy with a carbide, and just cleaning all that out of the inside, and also putting a little bit of like a tiny 45 on there too. After that, I'll polish it. I'll, I'll buff it. I'll take the grinder wheel off that, put a buffing wheel on, and buff these in so they're all nice and smooth, so there's no sharp edges when we uh, slide the rod in. The other thing I gotta do is take this here, cut these little pieces, I guess two inches long since that's a two inch pipe, and make a little cross uh, here and here on the bottom so that, uh, you know, of course, the rods don't fall out. And on my bigger uh, rods, they've got actually got a cross cut in them and they'll, it'll fit down in that notch, keep them from spinning in the thing if anybody thought that was important i don't know if it is or not but anyway they'll kind of lock into that little cross uh stainless steel cross so i'm going to get back to playing with my little tiny dremel again i don't know i'd recommend this little tiny thing but it's done the job all the jobs i've called on it to to do so it does, it does work but it's just kind of kind of tiny and this bit here thing comes loose all the time and the, then the bits are sliding out the end so I don't like that, but that's what you get. And as you can see, I'm pretty sure that's Chinese writing. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a cheapy Chinese uh, Dremel tool. But anyway, we will be back with more. I'm going to clean all these up. And like I said, we're going to buff them. And then I got to take them to my... Oh, oh now I got to cut all these rods. I got to cut these two lengths. So, uh, and I got a groove. I got a notch, a little groove here. 
like a little U here for the end of the rod to set in. The welder asked him, does he want to uh, weld it outside to outside like that, or does he want to weld up like a butt inside? And he said, he said drill a hole. Well, the problem is drilling a hole on a round surface like this, the drill bit dances around and you'll never get it where you want it. So instead of that, I'm just going to notch a U so that, the, that this 3 16th just sets down in that U like a saddle, basically. And then he can weld it there. So we will be back with more grinding the sharp little razor blade inside of that out. Paradise out. That's the chicken making summer. All right, everybody. You know, see what I'm up to now? See, I've cut these little V's or little notches in all these things and uh, rod holders, rocket launchers, whatever lingo you want to use. And what that's for is, of course, when you put your rod in, it'll go all the way through unless you have, well, but you don't drop that unless you have these little cross things here. So we've got a little cross thing that we put in here and the big rods, the big rods I have basically uh, have crosses cut in the end of the rod. So they'll actually lock into that cross thing there. So we'll weld that in we'll weld that cross on there. Obviously that's not lined up with the hole, but you get the picture. Folks. So, oh, the other thing that so, I did was how did, how do I know where the crosses go? Well, you see this, I took one of these, put it on the wood and drew around it. Then I took a handy dandy little ruler and divided it into halves, 90 degrees, of course. And then I extended the lines out past there. Then I set these down on here in the center of that thing. That's not centered, but roughly there. And then wherever the line stuck out, like right here, I drew a line on there, drew a line on there, drew a line on there, and drew a line on there. And voila, I've got all my marks. Ta-da. So that's my basic how-to on doing these. So anyway, I got one more to do. And all I'm doing is just cutting a little V in here. I, I just come in with my ang angle grinder cut just a, like a little V and then kind of clear out the bottom so it's got a little room for the, you know, it's not a perfect V. It's rounded at the bottom for the rod to fit in there nicely. So I only got one more of these things to take to go but it's marked and ready to roll so i'm gonna cut the v's in here and then it'll be i'm gonna be oh, the other thing that i'm gonna do you so, see how this one rides up on top of that one well i've marked not these ones i've marked these ones here and i'm gonna kind of grind about halfway through this here you know like christmas tree stand have you seen those and halfway through this one in the center, we got these little marks that I got to grind between the blue marks there, and it's I think not focusing there. So I'll grind between those marks uh, and make a little knot so that they kind of uh, interlock, so that one's not down because obviously these grooves are equal. One's groove's not up and a groove's not down, so these have to be level across here so like i said i'll notch half of this one and half of the cross one and you'll see it i'll show it to you picture's worth a thousand words paradise oh all right i've got them all cut and ground now they'll fit really nicely just lay right down in in the grooves and crisscross each other nicely and now i can take them over to the welders i press them off they're good to go. That guy keeps interrupting me. Uh, but other than that, we're golden. I'll grind them and then buff them. And then we'll be styling. So we started with this. Used a little bit of this. One of these. And voila, we got rod holders. So we'll be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island. Call me Rod Holder Roger. <laughs> Paradise out. Alrighty. We are rolling up a storm now. Two down, one to go. No, uh, three to go. <laughs> My counting's off. So we basically get it. You set one across there, center it up, the flat side, the groove side up. Take that bad boy, 
do the same thing, but they'll put the groove side down. <clears throat> and there you go, but... Now we take it off, put it on there, and then we can weld it. Do the heavy duty welding part now. So, to avoid any more flashes, I will be back when he's welding it into the tube. Paradise out. All right, now, we're going to zoom in here. We're going to put a tack on that guy. Oh, A little love tap, folks. Now we'll put the heavy weld on. So anyway, we'll be back with the flashing once this bad boy's done. Paradise out. Hey everybody, we're welding up the uh, rod holders now. Got that bad boy. Yeah, of course they got the cross at the bottom so the rod don't fall out and also so the big rods uh, lock into that. So we're welding these bad boys up. This one here in the front, that's just going to be for bait fishing and that. That's obviously trolling our bait fishing. Trolling our bait fishing and trolling our bait fishing and bait fishing. So, or just hanging your rod there. Of course, we've got rod holders going across the top too, so when we're driving and not, that one's good. Okay. Let's go to the other side. Moving over. This one, this boat here is wet. It's not that, that side there, I don't think. Okay, this side's not wet. You're lucky. It's your lucky day. <laughs> You're not going to turn your blue shirt into a white shirt. Although we could just paint one more stripe across the bell, and it looked like it was supposed to be there. Okay. That, that's wet there, honey. You just said it's not wet. On the side, that here, here, it's paint here on the side. Now all we need is a rod holder and a rod, huh? Let me go find it. Oh, there it is. Paradise out. Putting the last rod holder in here. And again, this one just kind of goes out the front and over the kind of uh, the side of the bow here. And then that bad boy is uh, good to go. Yeah. Got them all. Lined up and ready to rock. So, we're still painting, by the way. We're painting and welding. So, try not to get, <laughs> get the welder shirt all painted white. Yeah, this is wet here, so, <laughs> so be careful. This is wet. Oh, oh, yeah. And, and if you want to come under the, well, no, there's no way. Yeah, hon, Nate, hold this out. Oh, well, this side the most dry, yeah. Yeah, that side dry. So, yeah, 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 and the inside's all wet, so I can hold it. It does it's, it snaps on mm -hmm. 
Is it enough power? Honey? Honey, is there power? Go check. Did they, did, yeah, and he checked that plug. Check that plug. We lost power on the last one. Hang on. Honey, go ask them. We'll find out. We got to diagnose a power issue right now, so we'll let that go down. That side of the boat's not wet, so on the outside, not the inside. So anyway, we'll go check for power issues, and we'll be back with more for my paradise on Italian Island at the last rod holder and the power goes out. Paradise. All right, everybody. Out. There is a mock-up of <laughs> the rod and the rod holder. I got to buff some of this stuff out after the welding, but other than that, we're, well, I got to buff this top edge so it's not rough and it's a little bit rough. I've fouled it and ground it down to where it doesn't scratch or cut you, but still, there's the rod holder there. Rear, here's the rod holder for the front. This one here. This one will hang out and drop down uh, at the front side of the boat here, this side. There's no other rod holders on the front, although we certainly could fish off the front. I'm figuring six people really 